Exciting morning for Vancouver product Jordan Child. She made an appearance on the Today Show along with gymnastics teammate Suni Lee to talk about this week's gold medal winning performance by the U.S. women's team. Take a listen to what Childs had to say about preparing for her next round of competition here in just a few days. I'm kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think it's really more so like, I'm literally the last person to go out of the whole entire Olympics. So wow. um, I'm really excited though. This is definitely a dream come true, making an event final at an Olympic game. So I'm just really excited and hopefully I can give the same energy I give to everybody else to myself. <laughs> Childs will compete in the individual floor exercise finals coming up here on Monday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Drew Carney. And I'm Trenton Green. Let's take a look at your top headlines. Three Americans imprisoned in Russia, in some cases for years, are back home in the U.S. with their families today. It's the largest international prisoner swap in post-Soviet history. Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich is one of the three prisoners freed. He was jailed last year while reporting in Russia and convicted last month on espionage charges, something he, the paper, and the U.S. all denied. Portland police are preparing for the possibility of a large street takeover. It's expected to happen this weekend. Social media tipped police off about the event. Past street takeovers here in Portland have turned violent and in some cases have turned deadly with shootings and crashes. Police say they don't know the exact location of this weekend's event, but they're focusing their attention on streets in Northeast like Marine Drive, 122nd Avenue, 158th Avenue, and Airport Way, which have all been popular takeover spots in the past. After months of back and forth, Multnomah County has agreed to allow ambulance provider AMR to staff some of its ambulances with a mix of paramedics and EMTs, something other counties already do. But the changes are part of a 12-month pilot program aimed at improving lagging response times and ambulance availability. The plan still requires official board approval. A third family has filed a lawsuit against Oaks Amusement Park because its atmosphere ride malfunctioned. Back in June, about 30 people got stuck upside down on that ride for 25 minutes. Willamette Week reported that a parent of a 13-year-old girl filed this latest lawsuit just last week, saying their daughter is dealing with post-traumatic stress and anxiety. They're seeking nearly $350,000 in damages. The ride, by the way, is still operating, although it no longer goes fully upside down. In developing news, a former Paralympian says someone stole his specialized prosthetic running leg at a Beaverton gym last weekend. Richard Brown won a silver medal at the 2012 Paralympic Games. The prosthetic running leg that was taken was customized to fit him, and he told us the one that we see uh, in some of these videos that we're showing you here is actually only used for day-to-day -day use when he's walking. I was just really floored for one who steals a prosthetic leg uh, <laughs> that it's, it has really no value on the street like it's, it's not like you can sell it on the black market or pawn it or anything like that so so uh, it's really just trying to be creative right now that's the biggest thing is just being a, that most as adaptive and creative as i can over my until i can figure out my leg we reached out to beaverton police and the beaverton gym for more information but haven't heard back Brown, meanwhile, is trying to raise the money to buy a new prosthetic running leg, which he says will cost him about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Now to a traffic alert. The Hawthorne Bridge will be closed this weekend starting at seven tonight through five o'clock Monday morning for paving and repairs. It is a complete closure, by the way. We're talking cars, bikes, and pedestrians here. And even after it reopens on Monday morning, the westbound lanes of the bridge will shut down again every weekday between 2 p.m. and 5 a.m. so crews can continue working on repairs. All right, let's take a break from our news headlines to check in with meteorologist Rod Hill. So Rod, we talked about today being a hot day. It is especially hot right now in eastern Oregon. Yeah, well, I mean, we're clearly backing off from the near 100 degree temps here in the Willamette Valley that we had yesterday. But out east, to Drew's point, an excessive heat warning, the purplish tones you see still up and temperatures widespreadly so from Burns all the way up into Pilton expected to be well over 100 degrees this afternoon. So that's our focus at noon. I mean, right now it is 98 in Baker City. So you'll be obviously probably hitting 100 degrees coming up at 1230. 95 in Pilton, 94 Yakima, 92 Burns all expected to be above 100 degrees. And we're still going to be well up into the 90s in the Dallas and Bend where heat advisories are up for this afternoon. Now up and down I-5. 
it's much better. In fact, after morning clouds, it's only 74 up in Kelso and Longview, and we're getting kind of a partly sunny day thus far. There's some mid to high level clouds caught in the upper level flow aloft that's been coming overhead. We're at 80 degrees right now. I still think we're at least going to hit 90 this afternoon. I've lowered the potential high down to 93 degrees. Your seven day for the weekend is coming up. All right, Rob, we'll look forward to that here in just a couple of minutes. But we also want to talk about keeping cool at the Clark County Fair because the fair kicked off today in Ridgefield with everything you'd expect from live music and rides to fried fair food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this morning, we did talk to the pit boss at Daddy D's Southern Style Barbecue about keeping cool on a hot day like today. I have a bucket of ice water here every day for 10 days, and I switch it out every 20 minutes just to stay cool because I'm actually cooking the ribs in the heat. So you can imagine if it's 100 degrees, it's probably 120 over there, you know. I don't want to imagine actually. <laughs> really hot there uh, for the next several days. The fair again started today. It runs through next Sunday, August 11th. Now to a KGW investigation into the popularity of sports betting in Oregon. A lot of us might be picturing putting money down on football or basketball maybe. And people do that for sure. But the crazy thing is a lot of people in Oregon are also betting on table tennis. Okay. When, I, when I heard that, I thought, no, this can't be true. <laughs> KGW's Kyle Aboshi explains it is. Sports betting is booming. Oregonians wagered more than half a billion dollars on games last year. But a closer look reveals it's not just football or basketball that people are betting on. Table tennis. That's right, table tennis has become one of the biggest sports for bettors. Last year, Oregonians wagered $57 million on table tennis, making it the fourth largest draw for sports gamblers behind professional basketball, football, and baseball. To give you an idea of how prevalent this is, Right now in Poland, which is I believe 10 hours ahead of, of us, uh, there are three different live matches going on. Dr. Ken Pendleton is a sports marketing instructor at the University of Oregon. As he showed us, the lineup of matches to bet on runs round the clock, with a new contest starting every few minutes. This is like the crack cocaine of sports gambling. Unlike other sports, there's always action. Matches don't last long, and in-game betting lines change fast. So you're seeing the players play, you're seeing the odds change every five to 10 seconds, and you're free to wager you know, fairly large sums of money on this at any time. One of the biggest bets, February of last year. In the wee hours of the morning, a sports better in Oregon put down $35,000 on this match in Poland between two relatively unknown players in an empty gym. The bet paid off cashing out for 41 grand. Is this high level table tennis? It really isn't the highest level. I would consider it club level. Sean O'Neill is a two-time Olympian and U.S. Table Tennis Hall of Famer. He explained that betting on table tennis took off during the pandemic when the rest of the sporting world shut down. Since then, new leagues and tournaments have popped up, mostly based in Eastern Europe. It seems like they're created simply for gambling. It really is. Yeah, they, they know it. They're having players play 24-7 all around the clock. The matches are streamed on YouTube or betting platforms like DraftKings. Typically, there's no announcer and no fans. Most of the table tennis matches offered by the Oregon Lottery through DraftKings involve the International Table Tennis Series based in Poland. It claims players are prohibited from betting and there are safeguards to help ensure there's no match fixing. These matches are real. These players are wanting to win. They don't know what the odds are when they're playing. Researchers suggest those betting on table tennis are drawn to quick, constant action, similar to video poker or slot machines. And the Oregon Lottery is helping to satisfy the appetite of those gamblers with obscure table tennis matches played day and night. As we can see from the data, they're making a, the state of Oregon and in in DraftKings and other bookmakers in other states are making a nice profit from this, and it, it, and it has the whiff of being problematic. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. If you have a story idea for Kyle to investigate, just give him a call. 503-226-5041 is the number there. It's on your screen as well. Or you can email callkyle at kgw.com. I have an idea for Rod Hill. Yes. I'm hoping that Rod can paint us a seven-day forecast sometime in the next two minutes. 
Place your bet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, get to, let's get going. Uh, so the coast was very cloudy this morning. We know we had some mist, some light precip down around Newport because it was showing up on our cameras. So here we are at noon. Up north, we'll start in Cannon Beach. And there's a little break in the clouds. We were calling for some areas, or still are, for some areas to stay completely overcast this afternoon while others at the beach get a little break of uh, the cloudiness. 66 degrees in Cannon Beach. It is well, it looks pretty much all overcast down in Depot Bay. This is a view from the Channel House. And there's 101. Looks like downtown's popping there with all the parked cars and action there in uh, Lincoln County. I do want to point out that our Cameron Aspen Lakes golf course, looking at the three sisters, one, two, and three of them, it's back to looking pretty smoky with wildfire haze hovering in the sky. And there are air quality alerts and red flag warnings up for portions of Central Oregon for high fire danger. Here's the air quality alert map right now. It's moderate out across most of Eastern Oregon. You've got un unhealthy for folks that um, are sensitive to air quality in Harney County around Burns, and then very unhealthy down that southwestern corner of our state. Uh, the Reserve Venus Golf Club and Low, you've got people out there walking on the green, playing some golf. You can see it's kind of been a partly to mostly sunny sky day. 81 is the temperature. We will hit 90. I'd say that's a high confidence call. I'm not sure how much above 90 we get. The weather modeling hour by hour has been pretty much spot on lately. This goes 91 at 4, 5 o'clock, 91. This suggests a high of probably in between there around 92. I did lower our forecast high for Portland down to 93. Remember yesterday we had that record breaking number of 99 and you folks in Salem hit 102. So clearly we are going to be noticeably below those levels. One thing I want to point out uh, for the weekend, let me play this into Saturday. This is 525 in the afternoon. So I've been watching, there's a disturbance that's going to be swinging by and there's reason to believe, if you just look at the upper level models, that there will be some thunder showers pop over the Cascades eventually tomorrow afternoon into the evening. This is around 5 p.m. And the modeling is now starting to pick up some shower activity. If that does develop, and if it migrates to the north, there's at least a chance we could have a spotty storm migrating to the valley the latter part of tomorrow, tomorrow evening. So keep an eye on that. The bigger threat of storms will be out in southeastern Oregon. You can see them popping right there and concerns, of course, of uh, fire starts from lightning. Uh, real quick, Central Oregon Heat Advisory, 102 in Bend, 103 in Madras. And then Eastern Oregon, remember that excessive heat warning, 105, 107, and 104, the 107 in Baker City. So that's still the number one headline, the heat out across eastern areas as you look at temps at 5 o'clock. And here's your weekend for Portland. Minus that chance of a spotty storm in the valley if thunderstorms develop over the Cascades, we're all dry. Tomorrow, 88, kind of partly sunny, and then more of a sunny blue day on Sunday as we get back up to 93. And then after that, kind of a mix of low 90s and mid 80s, and that is your forecast. Oh, it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. 93. All right, now to a tale of a runaway tortoise who, however, slow and steady, made it way farther than expected. <laughs> That's a true story, China. In fact, I have more details about it right here. I'm going to take it nice and slow, though, for any tortoises who may be watching this tale. Ten-year-old Bowser, you saw him there a moment ago, yeah. escaped from his front yard near the Springwater Quarter in southeast Portland this week. Apparently, someone left the gate open. Mm. His owners weren't too concerned. They figured out how far could he actually get, right? Well, it turns out he did walk about a half mile from his house mm. over the course of two days until yesterday when Portland police finally spotted him near southeast 92nd and Flavel. So they got in touch with Multnomah County Animal Services, and then Bowser was reunited with his owners. One thing about police work is you never know what you're going to get. And this is one of those bizarre days where you just have to laugh. He actually moves much faster than you would think he does. Yeah, yeah, he can really get moving when he sees something he wants. Bowser's family says they're grateful for his speedy return. Mm -hmm. He got so far away from home, I wonder if he ever was, you know, shell-shocked. Oh, gosh. I was going to ask Rod. You can answer this if you know the answer, but Rodney. Yes. When I say the name Bowser, you think of what old TV show? Bowser. Gosh, I'm, I'm having a brain. Really? You know I can't come up with the answer. Did you ever watch Sha Na Na? I really day, did not. I'm familiar with the title, but I really did, did not. All right. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. We're going to bow out here. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. We hope you have a great weekend. Final shot. Chani, you want to mention the final shot of our uh, little newscast here? Paris where the Olympics are happening right now. That flame is under the balloon. Not real fire, fake fire, but that's all right. We're equally excited. Have a good day.